Well, good morning. All right, two years ago, I said the recession felt, or we felt like we were recovering from the flu. I think we had recession fatigue. Businesses weren't investing, they weren't hiring, they really stuck. Last year, I said the tone of the economy really felt a little bit different, but that uncertainty, that cloud was uh, holding us up. Here are some of the comments I made from last year. I said consumers were gonna be weak. They were wanting to consume because employment was gonna grow slow, income was gonna grow slow, and I think that fell true. What about businesses? We said businesses are gonna sit on their hands until after the election, and then they're gonna start dealing with reality. Even though they don't like what was going on in the economy, they're gonna start dealing with it. And I think that's kind of where we were at so far this year. Out of all the ones on here, and this is a long-term kind of perspective, I said moderate growth will not occur until general aviation sees consistent positive signs. Now, we've had some positive signs, but consistent is not one of them. And that's a more of a long-term kind of expectation. All right, The Wizard of Oz. I am certain all of you in this room know this wonderful story of a girl, her friends, and the Wicked Witch of the West, right? We all know this story. Now, you might not have known in the novel that Glinda the Good Witch is actually from the South, Wichita. That was too similar because this was such a great town. They had to switch it up on us, I think. But it was from the South. We're a good place. Now, you also might not know that uh, there's potential allegory traits from the story to the 1890s and the economic situation that was going on there and the gold standard. Now, I'm going to depart a little bit from the gold standard in that conversation, but I thought I'd use this as a backdrop to talk about the economy here this year. So what does uh, Dorothy represent? She represents a determined, resourceful labor market. We look at the tin man who was looking for a heart back in the 1890s. We hear that story still, still today, by the way. And he represents industry and business. We have the, um, the cowardly lion representing small and state government. And we have Oh, I hear some laughing about that. I should have said federal government, but you know, that was not the story here. And then we have the, uh, the wonderful character, the scarecrow representing agriculture. Now it should be noted, all these characters actually had the character trait that they were seeking, but they had to go on the journey to discover it. And in some ways, there's a journey called the post-recession that we still have to discover to really implement this back into our economy. Now, we already had a great agriculture presentation, so I'm going to skip agriculture this morning. However, I am going to focus on a lot on the labor component of our economy. Now, this is the U.S. Uh, unemployment rate. Uh, you've seen this, hear this in the news quite often. What does this count? Everyone who is unemployed actively looking for a job. It does not include the discouraged worker, which is brought up, and I'll bring up in quite a bit detail later. It doesn't include any other sign of unemployment that you hear sometimes in the news to explain what's going on. What do you see? Right after 2007, we, at the end of 2007, we went into the recession. Eight, nine, you see the unemployment rate go up. Since then, the unemployment rate slowly is coming down. Now, I removed the years and added in another line for a reason. These, this is the percentage change of all post-war war recessions overlaid at one point in time. To give you a perspective of unemployment compared to this, this last recession and recovery of the recession. Two things you should notice. First, when you look at percentage change, this is twice as deep when you look at unemployment and we haven't recovered, right? This is pretty darn shocking, even though we're several years past the recession, right? It's just not the good kind of shocker. You know what I'm talking about, shockers there. <laughs> All right, so I know what you're thinking. You say, well, just because it's average, that doesn't really mean much. Let's look at it. This is the maximum and minimum change in unemployment rate from all post-World War II recessions. It's still fairly significant. So let's do something very dangerous. Let's think about what the economist wisdom was at the time as we went through this unemployment little bubble here and coming back down. So we go into the recession, we see unemployment go up to 10%. Economists said, this is cyclical in nature. When the economy goes bad, when the economy's good, we hire, when the economy's bad, we let go, the economy returned, we'll hire again, right? Even the, the depth, the 10%, actually made sense when you looked at the last previous decades, we had all this growth, it was just a correction in the market. You had a few months, a year to this, and the conversation said, well, it could be more structural of nature. Right? That is, we've lost jobs that will never come back because of the skills. We have new jobs that are slightly different going forward. Well, and I made some comments, I think two years ago, and said low tech, old tech type of jobs, data entry, those kinds of positions are probably gone forever. 
Um, and if you think about the data that was backing this up, you have unemployment pretty high, and you started seeing job openings going up, right? You would expect unemployment to come down if there wasn't a structural thing. So some people are pointing to that variable saying there's a structural issue. The headline in even around here and probably in the Eagle was something like this. There was a job opening, 100 people applied, but the employer couldn't find anyone. You remember the story, it's been still going kind of around here. So there was a conversation of a structural issue. So the question is, how much was going on is the cyclical nature, probably quite a bit, how much of it's structural? I think that structural has a component, but probably not as much of a component than we've given it attention to, but still an issue. Add a few more months, maybe a year to this, the conversation started going to, because the employment was not coming down, the long-term unemployed. People have been unemployed so long, their skills are useless, right? We've had this conversation. You can even throw the Generation Y in there, and I don't see a lot of Generation Y, so we'll make fun of them. They would never had the skills. That conversation's been on, and I, okay, it has probably a little bit of a component of why unemployment's not coming down on the labor side, but probably not as much attention as we've given it to it. And then you add a few more months, some intense, nerdy economic debates, and there was actually another prevailing conversation of one, the one reason why unemployment is not coming down on the labor side, and that is fairly simple. You have to go back to your economics class, and it's called sticky wages. So you think about this with me. The economy goes south. The business first handles the inventory, right? They start reducing the inventory. They change their input costs to lower their cost structure. They may lay off a few people. They hire, some, get some new equipment and technology to replace some people. And then they take the rest of the staff and they cut their wages 20%, right? No, they don't. The wage portion is very a burden to the company, a larger cost to the company. Right? And so if you look at that, you look at the last couple of decades when you had high unemployment, what did you do to get people into your, to your, uh, uh, your firm? You started raising wages. Wages started going up. So one conversation is wages might be already kind of high, and then you add in what's happened. What's happened to inflation? It's insanely low. You've had no relief from the inflation to take off the burden of what high wages are doing. Alternatively, look at the last few recessions. When you come from post-recession, inflation was a lot higher, 3 5%. It actually took some of that relief off. So the question is, how much of this might be a high labor cost? Well, I think that is probably a, a contributing factor of why unemployment is staying high. The question is, out of those four things, what is the component to Wichita? How much do we have of cyclical, of structural, of the long-term unemployed, and, and of this high wage cost? So I throw in Wichita here. You've seen these signs, we went in a recession later, our bottom dropped out, we went up high, higher than the Kansas one. And you see it slowly coming down every single year. You look at this, you might take an assumption that we look somewhat similar in combination of those issues, but I wanna actually turn the graph to something different. Most economists says, say that this graphic is a lot better than the other employment graphics that you look at. You probably have never seen it or really rarely hear about it, but it's fairly simple, it's employment, population ratio. You take everyone employed divided by the population, 16 and over and not in jail, which is a good sign, right? And this is what you have. It's a pretty simple number. It actually is a better representation of the economy and a better representation of what's going on in the labor market. So how do you look at this? When you look at this graphic, the gray lines represent recessions. You look back down the, uh, around 1980, it was around 60. About 60% of the population was employed. All right, I should note that in this, it doesn't matter if you're a discouraged worker, you're still counted. It doesn't matter if you have a disability, you're still counted in this, right? You go to the late 80s, 90s, 2000s, what happened to the employment population ratio? It kept going up and up and up, right? That's a sign of what was going on in the economy. We go to this last recession, it dropped sharply, it bottomed out, and you should actually still note the employment, even with general growth in the economy, has barely been coming up, right? This represents what's going on in the economy. Now I'm gonna throw in Sedgwick County. First thing you're gonna see, Sedgwick County is a lot higher. It's a simple answer. We're a lot better than the United States, aren't we? I mean, it's a simple answer. I, yeah, I'll give us some clapping on that one. Well, there's some other reasons why we're actually higher. We're in the Midwest. We also don't include lower educated, higher poverty areas across the United States. A lot of reasons, and we can go into more if you really want to, but let's look at the trends. You look at the 90, 91 recession, U.S. went down for their, their ratio. We actually stayed level. We went into a business cycle, went down. If you were here from 90 to 90, 91 to 96, you remember, Rotocraft, 
military and commercial aviation all went down, the deliveries during that time period. It started to recover. We had another dip in the business cycle. Then we went to the next recession, dropped, came back up, and then we hit this recession. We went down and we went down and we went down. There's a convergence almost from these lines. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is probably the most accurate slide you've ever seen to represent what was going on in our economy, isn't it? You've seen all those other stories that just have it. We looked at our numbers. It's hard to say what's going on. This actually shows the labor side of our economy much better than everything we've seen. But it also tells me one thing. There's a deeper labor issue here than there is at the U.S. level. So the question, is it cyclical? Absolutely. A big chunk of this is cyclical. If the economy would turn around, everyone out here would be hiring and would do a lot better. Question, is it structural? Well, conversations with manufacturing companies in town it is clearly a structural issue, but probably more of a structural issue here in Wichita than at the national level. And it's not just manufacturing, as I'm gonna to allude to later, there's some other sectors that are having structural issues here. The question is, is it a long-term unemployed issue? Have people been unemployed so long that they're losing the skill? Well, you know, there's no way to, to really look at this and prove it, but I really don't think so. Part of it, we have a production worker anyway, and then that skill set comes and goes. I don't think that's as much of an issue. Overall, the workforce is a little bit different than the Midwest, but I don't think we really need to have much of an argument. It's probably a small portion of what's happening to our labor market. The question is, is it a high-waged issue locally? In this case, I think it is as similar as the U.S. as a high-wage issue, but I also think it's a high-wage issue for another reason, and it's for aerospace, right? We can compare aerospace just generally, but you look at aerospace specifically in business jets, what's going on, why are companies going to Chanute and to other parts of the state and other countries on the labor side? Well, it's access to labor and it's labor costs. There's some other things. There's other components beside it, but those are factors to it. It's something that we need to think about for Wichita. So what I want you to come away with. First, the labor market conditions are now similar to the 1970s. We're probably not going to go back up anytime soon. That labor, uh, the, uh, the population employment ratio, right? There's no expectation to do that without greater improvement in the economy. When you look at the local economy, we've been severely affected. It could easily be more of a structural and high wage issue within our labor market than the national economy, a concerning thing locally. Overall, the con for the economy to improve now, the local labor market will have to adjust to the economic environment. So what does this mean for Dorothy? This means a very different mindset for Dorothy, right? That means she's going to have to be determined and resourceful with the skill sets that she has and finding the job that she needs to have. So it means that she might, although she had a degree over here and everyone said there's a job and there's not, she might have to go back and get another degree over in another segment of our economy. And there are tight segments of our economy that need employees. She might need a change. It also might mean a very hard truth. Although her skills and talents haven't depreciated, she might have to accept a lower wage position somewhere else. Not because it was something that they did, but it's just because of the demanding forces within our economy locally. All right, we've asked businesses about what their concerns were globally, nationally, and locally. And there's actually a change in the mindset again this year. Uh, Euro debt crisis has been number one for the last three years. It obviously came down a little bit this year. U.S. competitive comp position used to be the top one. It went down to fourth, and this year it came back up to number one. I think this is a sign that businesses are less concerned about things they can't control, and they're more concerned, since we're an export city, more about competitiveness. We're more worried about things that affect us today. You flip this to the national concerns, and it's actually a similar story. Long-term unemployed was fourth, and it went up to number one. We're worried about hiring people. We're worried about the labor market. We're worried about things that actually matter on a daily basis. Federal debt and debt ceiling came down. Uh, but uh, let's be honest, the federal debt and debt ceiling is a major issue. And for our forecast, I'll go ahead and say this right now, we have a shutdown that will affect our economy in the long term. It depends on how long. I haven't incorporated all these in the numbers, so you have to look at our numbers and put some perspective to it. We might have to revise it later. And if we get close to the debt ceiling or what worse, go past the debt ceiling, you know, our numbers are, are gone. We're going to have to redo our numbers because we can't control or predict some of those political forces. All right, state and local concerns. Well, the first two, state and local government budget, state public policy uh, are the top. This is almost apropos for the Cowardly Lion. The Cowardly Lion went to the Emerald City, representing the national government, looking for courage, looking for a solution. Now, 
by no means does our state government looking to the national government for help, but what businesses are thinking about the, the state and local government. Businesses are wanting state and government to be courageous, to dealing with the budget issues, dealing with the solutions. They're also, from the conversation I had in round tables and in the community, they're also wanting the, the state government to also protect certain components that are key for economic growth. What they are also afraid of, as we talked about, I believe last year or the year before, is the uncertainty. Too much change is very scary to business. You can't do planning. You can't know what's going forward. And too much change is also a problem when you talk to local businesses. All right, what's the business environment? What well, we asked about material costs or input costs to the company, and 70% of the businesses said that material costs were the same, and that makes sense. There's no inflation, right? Nothing to worry about. The prices that they charged their customer was pretty high. 85% said no change. What does this tell us? This tells us, well, there's no inflation, but businesses here think that their customers are very price sensitive. They're not going to do a lot right now. They can't handle that cost because of, you looked at the labor side. Let's flip over here with very little improvements in, in uh, prices. What's volume demanded? Good news, 50% said that volume demanded has moved up. But notice there's a lot of other lines here. This is not for every segment of our economy. There are some segments that are saying demand is not as good or some is doing um, the same. You go over to the profit side and it's all about profits. 50% said the profits have been about the same, not much changed. What does this tell us? This tells although the demand is mixed, right? We're looking at profits. It may not necessarily be financially beneficial for every segment. And you heard the story of the national level. We have a different story here on the, what is financially beneficial here. So future expectations of the businesses, they said really no inflation. They said, I can't charge much more because the market is so hard here right now. Now we also asked them, let's talk about employment expectations. What do you expect going on in the next few months? Are you gonna hire, fire? And 70% said really no change in employment. 20% said they might let go a few people. So this is kind of why I think it's gonna be grow by fits and starts. You look at these conditions, you look at what's going on, maybe not necessarily financial beneficial in every sector, you look what's going on in, in these costs, it's gonna grow by fit more of a fits and starts. You're gonna be razor focused on how to make a growth as you, as you need to grow. You're gonna hire only when you need to hire. So overall, what do you need to come away with? Business concerns have shifted a little bit more and it's down to the bottom line. I, this is a good perspective. We were way up here, even last year, thinking about what's going on, these all uncertainties. Now we're right down into the core business. We have to make money. We're gonna, if we don't make money, we might fail. So we're gonna do it no matter what. And I think that's a good sign. Three concerns that we have, top concerns, US global competitiveness, long-term unemployment, government budgets. Overall, business environment is improving, but expectations remain mixed. So for the 10 man who was looking for a heart went on the road, you gotta think about the environment. We have high labor costs, perhaps. We have, um, we have a, maybe a structural issue going on here. We have maybe not the best uh, financially situation, sound situation. I think the business in this community has actually had more of a heart than we've given it credit with. I think they've, they've tried to take on the labor force and keep them as best as they can given the conditions that we've had in our, in our regional economy. But I won't let the businesses off the hook because the conversation is pretty simple. Businesses are expecting the labor market to be packaged in a nice little ribbon, all tied up, ready to work for them. And although some companies do great training programs, the reality of this labor market to improve, businesses are gonna to have to embrace the idea that there's a lot of employees out there that don't have all the skill sets, all the things that needed to come to the job right today. Right? They're gonna actually change some of the HR practices. They're gonna figure out, if they train them, how to keep them there long enough where they get the value out of them. So to improve the economy, we need to look, see a difference in the mindset of the businesses locally. All right, when I last looked, the Moody's said the national economy is gonna grow by 1.7%. Well, it's gonna see what happens over the next few weeks. That could go down. Our forecast for Kansas was 1.4%. 
the growth across the state is still not even. We look at Kansas City still leading with a business professional services. Government is pushing down the Topeka area. You look at Western Kansas, and we talked a little bit about farm income. It's been growing pretty well, but that farm income coming down is going to affect some of the other service sectors in, in Western Kansas. Slower growth. The medium-sized cities that have manufacturing, well, some of those are growing. They're actually having a lot more development and exports, some great values in the segments that we do across the state. From this point forward, let's talk about Wichita only and specific industries. The first one we should talk about is the oil sector. It's been a lot of fun for the last two years to look at and talk about. Last year I said by the summer, we're gonna know where we're at with the oil sector, right? So I looked at oil production and oil production was coming up uh, through 2012. It was coming up in 2013. That growth has been really nice. It has created wealth because we have already have existing sole proprietorships and, and businesses here that are in the oil industry. It created some wealth. On the labor side, I said those jobs were somewhat invisible because people were coming from out of state working here, right? And I said that they might see that. And we've seen some of those jobs kind of materialize down the ground within, within Wichita and Kansas. The question is where we're going with this. Well, when you look at, at oil production, we have come, we're nowhere near our previous peak. And from conversations I've had with people in the oil business, we're not gonna get any further. We should just enjoy what we've had. It's been great and it's been a nice relief, especially to our regional economy, but don't expect a lot more in this sector going forward. Construction, we've had some good news in construction. We've seen improvements in the high-end residential. We've also seen improvements in the multifamily market. Now. On the labor side of construction, construction is the second highest industry um, using unemployment benefits. A lot of people still there in the unemployment benefits. So I asked an employer locally about construction. When are they going to start hiring these people that are unemployed as we start to improve? And the, I had a candid conversation before I told them my conversation would be about structural. They said, the people unemployed in construction right now don't necessarily have the skills, talents, and abilities for the products, goods, and services we're doing forward. I'm going to get a lot more machinery going forward. Now, I was a little surprised by that in the, in the construction sector, but this is still a reality of the labor market needing different kind of training, needing different kinds of stuff to move forward. So to not go completely negative on this conversation on, on construction, we've seen some improvement in the retail market. We've seen some, uh, a lot of discount related stores. We've seen supporting good stores improvement this last year. According to the Martins company, they said rental rates have pushed up in the, in the retail sector. Now I'll pause and say that in your bag, and I really want you to look in your bag, there's a great forecast from the Martins company. They go over the whole entire commercial real estate. I know they've got all kinds of hashtags and tweets over here on this table, and I've looked at it. Some great insight. Definitely look at it for what's going on in the market. Back to construction. The construction is probably not going to have a big shift over this next year because we need some other fundamentals to improve in the economy for that to happen. Aviation, there's three things we have to cover, right? We have commercial, we have general, and we have uh, military. On the commercial side, production, production rates are, again, another record year. And if you look at income, according to Deloitte, it was also up, a little bit down from last year, probably because they're doing a lot of overtime to keep the production rates going high. So lots of demand there, great segment of the economy. Now, a business came to me and said, we had all this aviation concerns this summer. We had, a, we had the layoff notice from Spirit, one of the big, strong companies here. Is this a big concern? Well, look at the demand. One component, commercial, there is demand for what's going on Spirit. I consider this more, in my, my opinion, just a fast-growing company dealing with fast-growing issues. The segment on the labor market that they laid off, the manager side, is the tightest component of our labor market, the tightest one. Right? So people being laid off in that segment can easily be absorbed in some in the aviation, the, the manufacturing sector. Some can be go over into the professional service sector. It could be easily absorbed within our economy. Let's go over to the military side. Well, military, you know, is a downward trend, global demand for it. We also throw in some sequestration to put some salt on that wound, and it's been kind of hard. But we, let's lo talk long term. You know, Beechcraft's got their legs underneath them. We have light air attack fleet. There's some longer term values there. We also have Cessna with the new Scorpion. So there's some longer term opportunities there, but probably not a lot of jobs this next year. Go down to the general aviation. General aviation shipments and deliveries, the first half of the year were up in every segment except for business jets. So I turned to Abba Lafia from the Teal Group when he came and did a presentation. He said it could grow really fast in the business jet or it could be structurally changed forever, meaning the middle and the lower end business jets 
may never really recover. We're seeing the, that reality. Now, this is my opinion for the good or for the bad. The fate of that lower middle jet market, we've got to probably realize this if we don't already realize it sometime this next year, whatever that reality is. We're going to know, I think, what it might be. All right, the consumer and consumption. Let's talk about what's going on here. Uh, the whole morning, we're talking about labor slack. We have a lot of people unemployed. That puts, that puts a lot of pressure, downward pressure on wages, all the power on the employer. When you look at large scale, that doesn't really bode well for the retail sector. There's not a lot of, of, of employment growth. There's not a lot of opportunity for the retail segment. But there are three things that I think I should bring up that it was a conversation about the consumer here. The first one is revolving credit or credit cards at the state level has been coming down. I think that's a good sign. I think that's a good sign that in Kansas we're, we're less dependent on credit cards. We're making different changes in our, in our economy. Second one, I've been told that the overdraft protection the last couple of years at banks have been coming down as well. And if that's true, that means consumers are being much more prudent and they're looking at their fiscal budget a little bit better. Another one that I saw is that in Wichita, the severely uh, delinquent mortgages were less here than they were at the, state, at the state level or at the US level. So even though we have the economic condition that we are, we're actually having a more sound financial um, air capital consumer here. Now, I don't think, I wouldn't propose that we're that significantly different from the US, but it shows that there is some difference. That's a better sound consumer here and that has longer term value, although retail might be hindered from that. Transportation, I'm gonna mention one. Transportation overall is 1.1% growth. Uh, in transportation, we've had a lot of pipeline improvements and investments going on across the state. And that does create some jobs in the transportation sector. It helps support some of the oil sector, but there's another benefit that's been going on here. We actually have industries in the non-durable sector, byproducts of oil that are being produced around this area. Quite a few of them, but they don't get a lot of attention. Well, this is gonna create, not only help lower some costs, but create a lot more opportunities for a different segment of our economy as we go forward. Services, well, last year and this year, this was the, very, the bright spot of our economy, we made the most growth to the economy. We're expecting it to grow by 1.6% this next year. Financial services, I talked about banks the last couple years. The massive regulation has put pressure on banks, which in this area, instead of passing all those costs on, a lot of it got eaten up by employment, right? I asked banks this year, what's going on? And, and several banks told me, well, the demand's there, we're gonna start hiring. However, the massive regulation is still gonna put pressure on those small and medium banks across the state. Now, this is my perspective. It could be beneficial for Wichita, but it also could be, there could be some changes going on in Wichita. Right? We have a lot of small and medium banks across the state. Now, what does that mean? By the end of the year, you might have a different credit card with a different name, right? Professional services is expected to grow by 1,300 jobs this year, and we have it forecasted to grow about 800 jobs next year. Now, one component of this is Coke. Coke has been expanding. There's a lot of new jobs. This is actually more of a base industry for us because of the professional services. It's, we're exporting value out. The problem within this segment, the one conversation I had when I did my panel of businesses was labor market. This is the tight, what they're hiring is the tightest labor market component we have. Professional services, management, we have lawyers, we have accountants, all the people in that segment are very tight, right? The question is if we want this to be a base industry and we want to keep growing there, how are we going to attract them? How are we going to train them in this segment? There's a lot more that needs to happen. I added on education, it's actually perfect as a headline in the paper talking about education. There was a report recently said, most states are now reinfusing cash back into the education system. Technical colleges, community colleges, higher education. Since the whole conversation this morning has been mostly about the labor issue, I think there is a significant labor issue going on. I think investments there is something that really have to be looked at to move forward. Leisure and hospitality, restaurants, hotels. Well, if you look at the employment in this sector, there's only one year that it actually declined. It's been, it had, had growth every year, right? Why is that? Well, there's a regional tourism factor. People are consuming locally. We also have new products in trust. We have uh, the downtown developments. We have new hotels that have been putting this up. For this segment to continue to grow, there has to be a concerted effort to continue to develop tourism products or just not gonna be able to sustain that. 
You can pretty much skip government at this point, so I'll just skip that one. <laughs> I would have put a, a, some, some kind of comma to it, but it doesn't really matter what they really do. It's going to change whatever. All right, first thing you should think about, are there structural labor market issues within here? Yes, there's long-term ones. We need to address them. Again, for Dorothy, there's things that the labor market, they have to think about the way they're going to be engaged in the labor market. They might have to switch an industry to something they didn't otherwise want to, but that's just what's going to have to happen in our economy locally. Think about the industry. Industry is going to have to engage labor differently. HR is going to have a whole different feel going forward because we need them. There's bodies out there. How are you going to get them attached to your, to your um, company? And government plays a role as well. How are they going to help solve some of these structural issues? All right, the labor market, I think overall is determined and resourceful. I think, especially in the Midwest here in Kansas, they're going to slowly re-engage. For retail, I think it's going to be a lot of bargain shopping it's still going forward. But I think there's going to be more maintaining their balanced budget here than at the national level, a little bit. I have noticed a lot of commercials that you can now put layaway online and stuff like that. But I think here we're much more prudent in how we're going to spend our money. Businesses will invest strategically, razor sharp, right? They're going to be very careful to match the demand. They're going to build up some of that demand and just hire just enough to get by and to grow. Uh, businesses are going to be focused more on tomorrow instead of the past or the future, right? They're also going to be focused on things that are not going to affect them, but, but issues and policies that are going to affect them on a daily basis. I've added this one again because it's a longer-term kind of expectation. Moderate growth was not going to occur until we have aviation can see consistent positive signs. Overall, we're expecting the economy to grow by 1.2%. Put that again in perspective before we started this uh, uh, shut down 1.7% for the U.S., 1.4% for Kansas, and 1.2% for Wichita. Thank you very much.